Um, I'm Patrick and I'm a farm facilitator uh, for R4D for Flanders. Um, in this webinar, we will talk about a very important topic of climate and how we have started working on this in Flanders for the dairy sector. Uh, climate is very important for the agriculture sector and we also feel today uh, in Flanders what the consequences and what consequences this can have in potato and vegetable harvests are very difficult today because of the, uh, the lot of the lot of rain several fields of uh, plots of lands are under water here in, in Flanders today. Um, in 2019, uh, we started to develop a climate scan uh, for a number of sectors um, uh, one of them is uh, dairy. And we called the scan uh, Klimrec. Uh, and through this scan, we want to give farmers insights into their operations and support them in making uh, decisions. Uh, Anna, Anna de Meijer, is a colleague of me uh, in Boerenbond, and she is working as a climate consultant, uh, and she will guide you through the Klimrec, Klimrec process in the story of, of Klimrec. Anna. You can start now. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you, Patrick, for the introduction um, of the clim uh, Climrec climate tool. Um, I will start um, with um, the reason. The reason why uh, for developing Climrec, or why do we did we uh, develop it? Um, the reason actually came um, comes from two directions. Um, on the one hand, we have the demand from society um, and increasing in demand for insight into the climate impact of food and thereby uh, the food production and a demand of the reduction of this carbon footprint. And on the other hand, the dairy sector itself uh, wants details, figures um, on the products they supply um, without these figures coming from other sources. Um, and there's also a large demand from farmers themselves um, to receive advice on how best to reduce the climate impact impact on their specific farms um, and to see their efforts uh, quantified uh, with figures. So um, there's a large need and a demand for uh, cl more climate friendly and robust agriculture management. I think everybody agrees, uh, but how, how do we do that? Um, we wanted to give an answer to this uh, with the Klimrik project. Um, and how did we want to do this? Wanted to do this. Um, for society um, to give information via benchmarks of the data we gathered and give information on the climate impact um, of the different food products um, and to um, also for the consumer to make considered choices. Um, and for the farmers, uh, we want to give insight in the carbon footprints of the different subsystems um, of their farms um, and to give um, to give him, the farmer, tailored advice on his farm to make choices for a more sustainable farm management. Um, and this is the motto of uh, measuring his knowledge uh, yeah, to give the farmer a direction uh, for his choices to make. And how did we want to? How did we want to do this? The aim of Climeric um, is to do this to give uh, guidance and uh, support, and this uh, to make well considered uh, farmer can make well considered choices uh, of and implementations, um, and to do this also with a scientific basis um, and tailored to the farm, tailored to uh, at farm level. Um, it is also supervised by a climate consultant uh, to guide him to make these choices and implementations and also a very important um, holistic approach. So all aspects of sustainability included into this uh, into this tool or into this uh, climate path. So we uh, we developed a climate path uh, to go through with the farmers um, for for the for their advice for the make choices. Um, how does this climate path look like? Uh, this is a schematic presentation of the climate path. Um, in this climate path, the farmer is um, on, there are two big parts. Um, on the one hand, um, the, the uh, first, is, so the first part is the climate consultant visits uh, for the so-called climate scan. This is the part where all the data will be gathered um, to um, calculate the carbon footprints of his farm. Um, and then the second part of the climate path um, 
constituents on this side um, is to um, to yeah to receive uh, the farmer to give the farmer advice and guidance uh, based on their results um, and to give them uh, possible measures that he can take um, can be taken on his farm. Um, Uh, we developed um, this climate path, uh, this climate path uh, with two important pillars. Um, on the one hand, it is scientifically based, um, and secondly, um, it was developed in co-creation uh, with the food sector. Um, and in particular, that this um, tool, this part of the tool, uh, with the dairy sector. Um, the tool is scientifically based um, on a life cycle analysis. Uh, this is a method where the farm is pictured and all the processes present on the farm. Um, and this on a gate to gate basis. Um, everything comes in uh, on the farm with an impact. Uh, think, for example, of uh, purchased wheat or uh, artificial fertilizers. Um, and then all the products on the um, all the processes um, on the farm are counted, uh, and this until the products in milk in this case uh, leaves uh, the farm gate. That's why it's, it's called the gate to gate basis of the life cycle analysis. Um, feeding this life cycle analysis for calculation uh, requires a lot of input and a lot of information. Um, the main processes we need information from are um, data on feed production associated, this is associated with field work and operations such as fertilization and yields. Um, and this for the, uh, the, the production of the feed for the dairy cows. Um, then information um, of the presence of animals, the livestock, uh, livestock management, um, then the pur purchased uh, feed, uh, feeds, um, and then given uh, a feed given uh, per animal category. For example, we split the animals uh, in milking counts and in young animals, and then the young an animals also get um, separated in different categories um, for the given feeds. Um, then diesel consumption, electricity consumption, and water consumption. Um, it is a lot of data, but it's uh, but using a life cycle analysis, analysis uses a total uh, approach and maps everything from the different processes on the farm, and it gives us a detailed insight in the contribution of all processes on the environmental impact of uh, the milk production. Um, uh, the second uh, important pillar uh, of the development of the Klimrek tool um, is that we chose to make the tool in co-creation with the sector. Uh, this is a group. This group came together two times a year during uh, which feedback was given uh, each time on the development of the climate path. Um, this group consists of uh, stakeholders of the dairy sector and our very important pilot farmers <clears throat> of the projects who helped us developing um, this climate path. Um, this meeting, these meetings have two major advantages uh, to do this uh, development in co-creation. Um, on the one hand, the tool is tailored uh, to the practice, thanks to the feedback uh, during the development. And um, along the other hand, um, support by the sector is created uh, because we made it together. Um, this support is created by uh, in the climate impact, uh, which um, which the facilitates, uh, facilitates uh, the implementation after the development makes it more easier to, um, to implement it in the sector. Um, so um, how does this uh, climate path uh, looks like and how do we do this? Um, the first part um, involves uh, collecting this, this information uh, for the climate impact calculation. Uh, necessary documents are asked uh, in advance before the visit, um, which gives the climate consultant the opp opportunity to prepare for the visit. Um, then during a visit, the visit of the farm, um, the information uh, is gone over with the farmer and any missing information um, is re requested and is in, uh, put it in, in the tool. Um, after the information is entered into the tool, uh, the climate impact uh, will be calculated um, and the results will be displayed on a, a dashboard. Um, 
it's based on the dashboards. I will go now through all of these um, steps, the three steps of um, the climate, the first part of the climate steps. So um, <clears throat> the information uh, collected is entered into an online tool that was developed. Um, this tool is only available in Dutch because it's a Dutch project, um, but I will translate a little bit um, the next slides. Um, you can see several tabs above. Um, Uh, which uh, which are the main processes on the farm uh, we want to map. Um, you have the feed production, um, the feed purchase, the uh, livestock management, milk production, the uh, manual storage, the infrastructure. Uh, this is where uh, the diesel consumption uh, will be uh, gathered or will be put it in. Um, the energy consumption and the water consumption. Um, the gathered information is always uh, of one year. Um, we like a year where all the information is already presented. Um, the climate consultant gets a two day training uh, to fill in this tool. Um, and in this way, we want to ensure the quality of the data uh, enters uh, into the tool for, uh, for calculation. Um, then when the uh, results are calculated, uh, we get a dashboard, a dashboard with a lot of information. Um, uh, this dashboard, uh, this is uh, one part of the dashboard, and this um, on the left hand shows um, the impact displayed in two different ways. Uh, we have on the one hand the total kilogram CO2 equivalent uh, that the farm emits, and then this total um, these total emissions will be um, uh, gets an allocation uh, between the delivered corrected milk um, and um, the animals, the live animals leaving uh, the farm. On the same dashboard, uh, we also see uh, an allocation between the different subsystems that are presented on the farm. Uh, so the contribution per subsystem. Um, which are interesting figures uh, for advising guidance uh, because we get more in detail. Um, these subsystems uh, we see are different subsystems returning each time uh, the feed production, uh, purchased fuel, food, feed, uh, diesel use, that's a stall wearing diesel use, um, livestock management. Um, in this overview, this is, um, this is the enteric emissions that the livestock uh, produces. Um, then we have the manure storage, um, the energy consumption, and uh, the water consumption. Um, and then we can see which of these processes has um, the a part of the total uh, of the emissions. That's uh, corrected milk. On the same dashboard, we can dive into more details. Um, for example, uh, if we're going to look at the uh, first uh, feeds, um, and we can see which of the first feeds has the largest impact um, of uh, all the first feeds. Um, and that's um, per, um, per first, first feeds, uh, we can see um, the, <clears throat> the impact. Um, or for example, uh, your feed production, we can see uh, how, ma how uh, many emissions there um, of the Total emissions comes from, for example, the emissions uh, from the production um, of maize by fertilizer, um, <clears throat> the maize. Uh, and this, uh, these details for a climate consultants uh, are very important, and we can already get a, a good picture of what this farm can start working on and where there are uh, numbers of figures that are a little bit um, odd or um, not uh, not the normal uh, figures. Um, also on the same dashboard um, shows some environmental categories um, in addition to the climate impact scores. Um, this information is shared with the farmer uh, because they are also calculated uh, via the uh, life cycle uh, analysis, um, but the climate uh, pathway as it currently developed does not provide advice uh, or guidance on these impact categories at the moment. Um, 
when the, when the scientists uh, do at, at the moment, why do we use these um, categories at the moment is um, when the scientists check for new possible measures, new possible measurements, um, it is uh, being checked whether these new actions do not cause a shift to, to other categories. So we don't have a, a shift of uh, the problem or the ambitions. Um, but in the future, Klim Klimrek or the tool can be used as a basis for working on these, these other environmental categories uh, to extract information from it uh, and to work with it with the, uh, with the farmer in the future. Um, now I'm going to show some slides uh, with benchmarks, uh, more general information we can get from these uh, calculations of each farm separately. We can put them together uh, to get more insight to the uh, sector of the diary itself. Um, at this moment, um, I have figures and graphs um, of uh, a benchmark of 146 diary farms that have been calculated through the uh, Klimrek tool. And on this slide, you can see a spread um, of the impacts um, of the diary farms for which data was calculated, and these data um, which was calculated, and these data is mostly of um, the year one, uh, 2021. Um, we can see what what is um, the information we can get out of this graph is that the average um, in Flanders is one kilogram CO2 equivalent per kilogram corrected uh, milk corrected for fat and protein. Um, and that of all the farms that are above this average um, are the farms that there is definitely still room uh, for improvement. Uh, that they, these uh, farms above the average can get more, uh, yeah, can can uh, can improve their um, sustainability uh, of, or lower their impact. Um, then another uh, graph. Uh, what, what information gives us uh, this graph? This is uh, this slide shows the average share of the different subsystems uh, on a dairy farm in percentages. Um, this information um, that we can get from it is mainly on which the subsystem has a significant proportion of the total greenhouse gas emissions of a dairy farm and where the focus can be placed uh, both in the climate part uh, for farms uh, on the one hand, but also uh, where we can, where, where are gaps or where we can go for more research for new measurements um, and in which of these um, subsystems we can uh, uh, get more in detail and needs more information can can work on. So it's, it's a guideline um, to develop also um, the guides uh, and uh, uh, the advice um, for the farmers. Um, then when uh, we had the subsystems, uh, the percentages, but this is um, a graph uh, we can get out of the Klimrek uh, shows us the range of the different subsystems. Um, here we can see that the farms really are different. Uh, each farm is different and there is a large range uh, on the different subsystems. Uh, for example, we can see here that the largest spread is on purchased feeds. Um, this is also a category uh, that we use a lot uh, coming back um, in, in advice and in guidance um, because there is a lot of uh, possibility um, to um, lower these uh, purchased uh, feeds, um, and there's also a lot of spread um, on these um, on these purchased feeds. Uh, this is what we can get out of this graph. Uh, there's also a graph I uh, show to the farmers uh, during the advice and the guidance to give um, him uh, a reference for his own numbers where he uh, can find his uh, his own um, figures. Um, Another, um, yeah, so at the moment we have not seen, we, what we can do is go checking if there is um, on the different type of farms, if there is difference, if we can see there, um, if there is a kind of farm who is, uh, has less uh, impact than other kind of farm, but at this moment we have not seen a significant difference in the carbon footprint uh, between these different types of farms um, because um, we did not yet found um, uh, any correlations with the carbon footprint um, if we uh, check it with one parameter. 
Um, so we, I have two examples of this. Um, on the on the left side, we have the graph showing the carbon footprints in relation to the type of feed consumed um, by the dairy animals. Uh, we have here byproducts, cons concentrates, and roughage. Um, and we can see here there is not really um, a correlation uh, between um, these types of food and um, the carbon footprint, uh, kilogram CO2 equivalent per kilogram corrected milk. Um, on the right side, we have another example. Um, uh, and we see the, um, I, the amount of hectares per dairy animal in relation with the carbon footprint. And we also see not a significant relation between it. But there's a side note. We have not yet found any co uh, correlation at this point, but the benchmark is only of 146 uh, farms. So maybe if we get a larger number of, um, of farms uh, of calculations, there maybe will be a correlation to see. But at this point, we don't see any correlation. Um, this also means, because it's also uh, put to one parameter, it also uh, mean um, or the information that we can extract from this is that every uh, farm is different. Um, um, and that's like the, the previous slide I showed you of the ranges of the slip systems. There are so many uh, different aspects uh, that affect this carbon footprint on a dairy farm that is important to go farm specific at farm level and to go see with the farm, uh, with the farmer on which subsystems he can work on um, and not to go uh, generalize uh, dairy farms. Um, so the second part of the climate part is the guidance um, of the farmer by climate consultants, uh, by a climate consultant in which um, in which the possibility of applying different climate measures is uh, reviewed uh, for a specific farm uh, by the climate consultants. Um, and these options are then are then gone over with the farmer during an advisory meeting uh, and in a report. So we make up a report for these uh, farmers and um, I will show you now how do we come from a calculation and a dashboard to um, a report with uh, measure, measurements um, that a farmer can implement on his uh, specific farm. Um, we have, um, this is the list of measurements we have already defined um, in the project at this moment. Um, this is the living list. So uh, every time there is a research and there is something new is coming up, uh, we can put this in the list. Um, can put this in the list uh, to to give to the farmer. We always say this is kind of a menu for the farmer. Um, this is not that we um, we recommend all of these measurements um, always at the at one farm. Uh, we we always gonna check uh, each measurement uh, if it's possible on this specific farm um, to to uh, to implement these measurements. Um, we work, uh, especially at the moment, um, at five different subsystems that are the feeds, uh, feed production, animal uh, management, energy and manure. Um, at the feed, uh, the feed, we have some um, adaptations to the ration uh, of the, of the, or the feed of the animals that are um, scientifically um, based that, did, that this will uh, reduce the enteric emissions. Uh, and also we have the alternate feed components that is um, for uh, byproducts, um, for more use of byproducts because byproducts in France comes uh, with a lower um, with a lower impact than the other um, components. Then we have uh, feed production, uh, feed production that's uh, mostly um, about uh, lowering uh, the fertilization. Uh, that's why we have all, also gr uh, grass clover. Um, in the measurement because um, of the, um, the less uh, needle amount of uh, nitrogen. Uh, and then uh, we also the optimal, optimal uh, soil quality, uh, that's uh, not really calculable, but we also put it in, in, the, um, in, the, in the guidance to, um, to show the farmer it's important to work on the optimal soil quality and to give him advice and tips on how we uh, best do that. 
Um, then we have an animal uh, management that's uh, working mostly on uh, young livestock um, to reduce age at first calving, reduced replacement rates, uh, and then the optimal number of young stock and sexed semen. Um, it's, this is uh, mostly because um, all the young animals who don't um, need to be on the farm, um, they also uh, produce enteric emissions and um, also produce manure. Um, and to reduce this, uh, to work on um, the young livestock uh, on the farm. Um, then we have energy. Energy is um, mostly reduction of the fuel con consumption. Um, and then we have some energy, um, yeah, the, some energy uh, measurements who uh, reduce the energy consumption for the milking systems. Um, and then uh, we have uh, renewable energy production. Um, and then manure, um, that's mostly the anaerobic uh, digestion. If the farmer is interested in uh, anaerobic digestion on this farm, we can also um, go with, through with him um, on these uh, measurements. Um, so the method um, that the consultant uses to look at uh, possible measurements is to look at, uh, we, we have the list of these um, uh, of these measurements and to look at the possibilities um, and to compare them uh, with the farm and the farmer's interest. Um, the farmer's interest, uh, which normally already um, have been as asked about during the farm visit at the, uh, the gathering of the, uh, of the information of the data. Um, and then the measures um, are then selected um, and scenarios um, are made of these measurements. Um, scenarios are um, scenarios can be calculated um, and can be made to so of the selected measures. Um, this means that on the basis of a, a basic calculations, so the first calculation um, that we get out of the Klimrek tool, um, a scenario can be made with the necessary adjustments for that particular uh, measurement. Um, the scenario can be can then be compared with the baseline on the dashboard of the Klimrek tool. Um, so the dashboard shows not only the baseline uh, consult, but also um, the different scenarios um, we can make. Um, in, on this slide, this is an example, but you can put uh, a lot of other scenarios next to um, this uh, baseline to, to go to compare them. And you can compare them also um, in, in the subsystems and you can compare them also in the detailed uh, subsystems so you can actually go looking where there is a, a decrease a decrease in um, the uh, the carbon footprints of uh, the farm um, and then when um, this is uh, the scenarios are made up and then the, the climate consultants uh, makes up a report uh, and then go visit again the farmer uh, for advice and guidance to make uh, to give him all the information um, about his, um, his scenarios and his uh, possible measurements um, and to go through with uh, the farmer. Um, so the climate consultant visits the farmer uh, to discuss the report and go over with his uh, specific scenarios with him. Um, this way, the farmer has advice and guidance tailored to his own specific farm. Um, in general, we found that no farm is the same and that a different combination of measures is always suggested. So there's no farm who gets the same combination um, of, of scenarios or, or possible measurements. Uh, measures, sorry. Um, seeing the decrease in impact using the scenarios also has a motivating effect uh, for the farmer um, to see actually the decrease that is possible when it does something or he implements a measurement gives a really motivating effect uh, for the farmer to go um, to go working on this uh, specific uh, measurement or uh, this specific um, advice that has been given. Um, and also this way the farmer can make a good choice uh, which measures um, he wants to implement because the choice is still up is always still up to him we give him just a report with the information and the possibilities on his farm and he can go choose between them he can choose for all of them uh, but he can, he can go 
to choose to go slowly and to, to start with one, then uh, get another one, um, and so forth. Uh, so for um, we this I put two uh, important graphs in this. These are the different uh, scenarios that were been made, um, and I give always two graphs um, um, to to show him uh, the potential. Uh, also, the uh, the in kilogram CO2 equivalent per um, kilogram corrected milk, and also the absolute um, kilograms CO2 equivalent his um, his farm can decrease in his impact. Um, beside his own uh, report um, or his his own um, farm specific information. We also um, direct the farmer to our website uh, where there is a lot of other information. Um, we also have a climate academy, um, climate academy where we bring um, where we bring together various useful links and information um, to other projects or to other uh, contacts or to uh, to other information uh, where the farmer can find um, what he's looking for. And also every measurement um, at the climate farm has um, a very detailed um, description, um, a fish, uh, uh, a sheet, sorry, a sheet explaining uh, the measures in detail um, next to uh, what we, uh, next to the visit and what the climate consultant, uh, the, the, the information of the climate consultant, um, also uh, these sheets where he can al always go back to, to look for more information. Um, and also all the results of um, our web, uh, all the results of our project are coming into this website, but also um, when there is um, events uh, or with information or uh, webinars or all this uh, information gets on our website. So the farmer can always be um, <clears throat> informed uh, by these um, events. Then, um, yeah, for the future, because uh, right now it is running at full speed in Flumps, um, and there are still many things uh, in development, um, both from Klimrek, from the Klimrek project or the Klimrek tool itself, but also from other research and other projects um, that Klimrek wants to use as a basis, because there, Klimrek is a, is, a, is a good large basis, very detailed. Uh, thanks to this life cycle analysis, um, it can be used uh, to build more other um, other research or projects uh, to this tool. Um, the first thing that Klimrek itself is working on um, is that um, the, there is a lot of input needed uh, for the tool and this requires a lot of time. Our ambition is to shorten this time, um, and we need uh, and we see the opportunity uh, there through a platform uh, for exchanging data to to start making automatic links. Um, because at the moment it is a very uh, long taking, um, time consuming um, path or a climate path, um, and uh, to make it to to do it on a larger scale, um, there is. Um, need for uh, more time, uh, uh, more shorten uh, the time of this um, of this input of this data. Uh, these are these are many different links uh, and, and requ requires a lot of time and conversations with many different agencies to make this automatic data input um, before tool um, before tool will be um, largely automated automated. Um, a lot of time will have passed, but it is, um, uh, um, but it it will be very useful uh, for the climate consultants if there are um, some kind of information that already goes automatically into the web application. Um, so the, it doesn't need to be uh, all by us by, by ourselves uh, filled in uh, by the tool. But always, a uh, farm visit will be needed to go over these, these data um, and to check with the farmer if this data is correct um, if from this automatic data input. Um, 
So expanding the Klimrek tool is expanding um, a lot of interest. Uh, one of the most important things um, is the carbon uh, the carbon module. It's um, also um, an expanding from the Klimrek tool itself. Um, it's measuring the stored carbon in the soil and puts this um, these um, the figure of this carbon storage. Uh, next to, to the carbon footprint of the milk production uh, on the dashboard. Um, we are looking uh, forward to it, to have it, uh, because it's um, it's a very good uh, way to see what the farmer do uh, for storing um, the carbon into the soil. But this is, um, it, this is in progress and uh, we are working on it to, um, to show it and, and to implement it in um, the Klimrek tool. Um, we are not only staying with dairy, um, but we also um, go to other sectors, um, arable crops with potatoes and pigs. Uh, the pig farms um, have already had um, a development in the Klimrek project, but there needs some more fine tuning um, in these in these sectors. Um, and then we also have um, fruits and open field vegetables that has been started uh, to develop their uh, climate path for these um, sectors. And we see uh, of the attention Klimrek gets in Flanders, there are a lot of other sectors who are interested um, in this climate path for their, um, for their farms. Um, and then other applications, so not only the climate path, but also um, other uh, environmental um, categories that um, can built on this climate uh, climate tool um, because there's already a lot of information uh, via the life cycle analysis at this point. There is a lot of information, a lot of calculation behind the climate tool um, that can be used uh, for other uh, guidance and advice. So that was uh, my presentation. So I think uh, there is still some time for uh, for questions. Thank you, Anna. I don't know if there are questions. I don't see any in the chat, but maybe some people want to say something. What is the you you talked about if I understood it correctly about the the additive to reduce um, or you showed it and not not three I think yes yeah yeah yes uh, is this uh, on an experimental level or is it already common used in uh, dairy farms um, common use it is a little bit um, it's. Uh, the price of the product is at the moment a little bit difficult in Flanders uh, to implement it, uh, but it is uh, shown it has a methane reduction. Um, but it's it has a lot of tension because it is um, yes yeah, an add additive, so it is more easy to implement in the feed of the cows than to change the feed uh, in in whole. Um, there are some farms, but not a lot in Flanders who put it into their feed. Uh, but there are there is interest from the dairy sector to um, to to this product. Um, but it's not it's not really very common at this point. No. Yeah, it, I think it seems like if the uh, the the cost will not be um, so really. I don't know if the farmer will be have a profit of it. No, Maybe the no. dairy chain, the dairy chain will say, "Okay, we have a profit of it because we have less impact." No, yeah, that's correct. That's that's. Uh, I think it's a um, uh, tumble block for a lot of farmers. Uh, is the finance of these products? Uh, I think the farmers who, is, who are using it at this moment have find some financer uh, for the. Uh, yeah, I think that's a lot of it's a problem. Um, the, the price of this product. Uh, that's why it's not very common um, in Flanders now. But it's there and it's scientifically um, based that is, it's methane it does methane reduction. So uh, we put it uh, in the list and we can tell it, we can talk about it to the farmer, but uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a really common uh, measurement that will be um, taken on the farms now.
Uh, I would add something. Um, almost all the processors in Flanders uh, are knowing what uh, the Glimrec scan can do. They are all interested in it. Uh, and if the, the dairy sector wants to reduce the climate impact, in the processors will play a role in this. Uh, measurements that are easy to implement and are also economically good for the dairy farmer, they will be, uh, be began coming pro process. But uh, like you said, when it uh, is a cost uh, for the dairy sector, it is difficult. But mm -hmm. now we have a tool, we can calculate the production and that maybe it could be important for the processors um, to, to see what could be the result of the implementation and then they can help looking uh, for finance or finance finance the measurement uh, themselves uh, but they can help looking for the market or the money for the dairy farmer to implement it you can see here also on the the um, the slide that uh, the group of processors is also uh, involving with uh, co-financing in this project so they are interested uh, and they are they are happy that we have a tool that we can calculate the the the, the number of uh, reducing the car carbon footprint so and now it's time to look for the money for the most expensive measurements I suppose no that far farmers are the most open in measures which concern feeding, uh, changing something in feed, maybe reducing some some stock. Or oh, are you already very good in this? I think now you have already less uh, young stock. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite get to. I say that. Uh, where where do you see the most or potential? Ah, most uh, potential. Reducing young stock, I don't know. I, I, you have already done something mm -hmm. the last over the last year. The technique of inseminating yes. with uh, Belgian blues is very common in your region. Um, yes, yes. The 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 life uh, the, the life uh, the young stock measurement in in Flanders is is efficient, but there is still room for improvement. And I think uh, the strength in the Climrec tool is also to show the uh, all the small things that that might be thinking that they will not have um, a lot of impact. You can put them all together, and then you can see that all these small things can uh, have uh, an, uh, a reducing impact. Um, the the largest group um i think is the group um yeah all uh, everything with manure so uh, felt uh, the field emissions um the the manure uh, storage all these uh, kind of thing i think that there's uh, room um for for improvement um but i think besides looking for for the what's the the big uh, measurement or what's what's the uh, the largest degrees in this one measurement, I think, mm -hmm. it's strength of the combination of all the measurements and um, to go to uh, a more uh, to a way uh, of all small things that they, you can have uh, a, a decrease um, on your farm without even you were thinking, knowing it, it was, um, it could cause such a, if you uh, combine all these small things, it is a, it can be a large decrease. And I think mm -hmm. that's a strength of Climrec to show that um, it's not, always necessary to be this one big measurement uh, you have to take on the farm um, of, or to um, go for a total new uh, uh, management on the farm, uh, but you can do with what you are used to do or what you already do, you can have um, a decrease in your climate uh, impacts uh, by doing a lot of small things. I think that's also important, an important story to tell, um, yeah. I don't know if there are other ideas, objections, or questions. <laughs> I 
If not, maybe we can stop here. Okay. Uh, maybe your contact is in the in the list. We will send mm -hmm. uh, out the, the recording. The, you can send me the presentation. I can yes. add it mm -hmm. if you want. And then in the next newsletter, also Patrick knows it, or if you are in it, uh, we always send also the webinars mm. where we have a quite high audience who can have a look at it if they want. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you to to you both. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.